Emotions. What exactly are emotions? Hi, I'm Reverend Ellie Bierman. I'm so glad you came by here today to join us for our gathering of Metaphysical Ministry International. So what is a metaphysical ministry? It has nothing to do with religion. It has everything to do with spirituality. Because you are in fact a divine spirit living a human experience. And what that means is when you learn, when you discover how to tune in to your own spirit and enrich your experience with all the communication going on with you nonstop that you're missing out on now because you don't know how to bring it into your awareness. Suddenly you're going to see the 99% of the world that lives beyond your five senses. Now we begin each week with a happy share. Something that leaves you feeling good, happy, peaceful. And my happy share today is my heart is full of dragonflies. In fact, yesterday when I was doing my qigong outside, there was a dragonfly that lighted, quitted, landed. It was on a tree branch right at the end, right near me. And the whole time I was doing my practice, it was there. And I was talking to it, and I feel like it was talking to me. Dragonflies are really special, and some of my friends have given me some very beautiful dragonfly gifts. So, what is this thing called emotions? Everything that exists, me, you, everything you see in the background, everything you can feel or touch or hear, taste or smell, it's energy. And everything that exists beyond those five senses, that's energy too. Okay, so emotions then are energy in motion. Now, in addition to being a metaphysical minister and a psychotherapist, I am a specialized kinesiologist, which has everything to do with working with spirit. So I have a lot of experience with emotions as the driving force for relationship disconnects. And to give you the depth of how emotions are driving us, Take a look at this book. This book is a list of all the, ooh, hard to see. They're the acupuncture points in your body. Now, Chinese medicine doesn't use the acupuncture points quite the way I do. What I do is I know that each meridian, every single meridian has an emotional theme. When you have issues in your lifetime, different meridians are involved with each issue causing energy blocks because something's going to rhyme with the theme. And what's extremely cool, and the reason I showed you the acupuncture book, you know when you see one of the pictures showing you all the acupuncture points on a physical structure, a doll or something like that? There are lots and lots of points. Here's the cool thing. Every single point along each meridian gives you a different aspect of that theme. So one way to work with somebody is to find, okay, this meridian's out of balance. Let's find out why. Let's start here and let's work our way up. Okay, which point is it? And then find very specifics but another way to do that is I use emotion dictionaries now here is one that I use extensively can you see some of the emotions listed there now let me give you a what for that just explains what I was talking about with the points let's say somebody comes up with a sensitivity and imbalance about the word concerned and none of this is going on in our conscious awareness that's why you can't get rid of this stuff yourself so the spirit tells me the word concerned 
is bothering the person, but concerned, giving lots of things to a lot of people. So what I would then do, I look up in my dictionary, and it says these different meanings for concerned. To be interested, affected, troubled, deeply interested, worry, involved. I've never ever had anybody show as having all of those imbalances on that one word. It's usually just one, possibly two. So that gives me some place to go. And that's the power of emotions and understanding that the emotions are energy because I find them using energy and I clear them using energy. So what else do we have about emotions and how they impact you? Well, here's the real big one. Events just are. Circumstances just are. You assign the meaning, whether you want to be hurt or it doesn't bother you, doesn't faze you, whether you want to be excited or sad or happy. It's all how you choose to interpret the event. So where do you get that choosing? Well, you developed a habit, a pattern when you were young, and that pattern continues through your lifetime. And when you see a circumstance and your subconscious says, ooh, that reminds me of last time this happened. It goes back into your history, pulls up the events that probably didn't even happen but had the same kind of signs of possibly happening. So it pulls them up, and how did you react? And that's where you're pouring out an emotion that probably has no solid basis to it. But that's your habit, and you're going to act on that emotion, and that is how you end up with hurt feelings. Now, I developed this rule very many years ago. If I feel hurt or angry in the first place, more often than not, the person said or did something without any conscious awareness, not an intention of trying to be hurtful. So it's up to me to choose if I'm going to respond, oh, no, I'm not going to react. Because reacting, that's coming from nowhere. Nowhere that makes any sense. And the rule that I created is, I'm going to let myself feel however this event made me feel, whether it's sad or hurt or surprised or frustrated. But I'm going to limit it to three minutes literally set a timer for three minutes because after three minutes it's done it's over it doesn't serve me to stay stuck in an emotion that's draining me it's not impacting the other person you may have heard the saying that feeling hurt or feeling angry is like eating poison because that's what it's doing to your body it's poisoning you and expecting the other person to die. Boy, does this make any sense to anybody? Not if you stop and think about it. So, when I've been teaching this for many years, and people say, but you don't know what happened, and da-da-da-da. It's like, it doesn't matter what happened. How's it serving you to feel angry? What are you feeling inside? And it's always something disruptive to your health. And it's never ever something that's supporting you in your life. But they say, but I have to be angry and I'm going to be angry and I'm going to be angry all day and I'm going to still be angry tomorrow. That's a choice they're making. It's not something that they have to do. What they can do to stop the pain is to recognize they're going back in their past. They're pulling up a reaction instead of stepping back, responding, taking a look at the circumstance and figuring out, hmm, why this happened to me? Because if you look across your life, you're going to find 
the same problem, the same issue, the same frustrations coming constantly. Lots of different people, lots of different situations all having that same theme because the universe is saying, yo, let's get clear on what's happening here. And the way to do that is to pay attention to it and choose to look for the gifts in the situation. If you have studied or at least viewed or read all my posts on forgiveness, that's what it's all about. When somebody does or says something you're interpreting as hurtful or frustrating, look for who you get to be because they did that. You're going to get to take an action you've never taken. And to do that, first you have to become someone you've never been. So look for the gift. Apply the gift with your new action. And send the person love for giving that gift to you. Now, the first thing to do when somebody around you is angry or frustrated or being nasty or uncooperative you can't talk to them you can't rationalize away their mood the first thing to do is acknowledge it come from a place of love using i messages help them to express that anger help them to express their frustration help them to express a disappointment because that's why they're exploding in whatever the feeling is they just need to get it out and once it's out then you can talk to them because probably whatever was causing it has disappeared in the meantime now, if you have a very young child, if you have a child, a toddler who's having tantrums, first thing you want to do is say something like, wow, you're really upset. You're feeling really angry. And your kid will not have the words. So you got to help your kid find the words and go through it. Yeah, it'll take a little while, but you know what? It's showing love to the person. It's letting the person know, wow, it's okay for me to feel this way. And it's okay for me to have this kind of behavior because I'm loved. And it's safe to do this with you because I know you're not gonna stop loving me when I behave that way. So that's the way to quiet down so that you can communicate with somebody doing a behavior that you really don't want to be around. But again, it isn't about you. It's about them. It's about their interpretation. It's about their reaction, not their response. So the way you avoid getting sucked in to an argument I learned this when I was married after many, far too many years of arguments. One day, when an argument was starting, I just kind of paused and I thought, hmm, it takes two people, two people to create an argument. So I'm not going to participate. So what I did, instead of adding to the argument, I just listened. And here's what I discovered, and you will too when you do this kind of behavior. Everything he was accusing me of doing was what he does. He doesn't want to recognize. That's the same, same thing you'll see very commonly in people who judge others. The judgments they're voicing, the fingers they're pointing, totally reveal behaviors prevalent in themselves thoughts feelings they don't want to acknowledge about themselves so now you have a good picture of what's going on that's unspoken in the person so now you have a place to come from that's loving 
you don't have to say anything, but you can, without saying anything, just send love to the person. Because love is the one and only thing that actually heals people. So, how would you resolve a friendship split? Or any kind of split that's going on? First, step back. Look for your patterns. And say to yourself, how does it serve me to let this go on? Because you're not going to find a helpful answer. How does it serve me to be angry with this person? There's no way you will find an answer that's nourishing to you. So, what are you going to do today? What different step are you going to take that you've never taken before to change how you feel about a certain situation or more likely a certain type of situation that's always caused you to pull up that reactive behavior resulting in let's just say results you'd rather not be living you know, how you live your life is entirely your choice. And whether you're happy or not, or whether you're seeking happiness that just doesn't come, that's your choice. It's your choice to become someone who acts differently.